Hello. Today, we're diving into what I believe is the most important lesson in special relativity. Picture two observers, one in a spaceship, the other standing on the ground. They watch the same events unfold, but completely disagree about distances and times. And yet, somehow they're both right. The key to this mystery is something called simultaneity. To make it clear, I've built three animations that will show you exactly how it works. Let's discuss the setup. LeBron is aboard his spaceship and uses a tape measure to check its length. He finds the ship to be three times 10 to the eighth meters long. The exact number isn't crucial. The reasoning works for any length, but choosing such a large ship makes the math come out neatly. Meanwhile, Einstein and Newton are standing on the ground. From their perspective, they are at rest while LeBron and his spaceship fly past to the right. They measure their own separation to be 1.5 times 10 to the eighth meters. Newton stands near an apple tree, but he's careful to avoid getting boinked on the head by a falling apple. In the last three videos, we built the foundation of relativity. Each person sees their own frame as the one at rest. Objects in motion appear shorter along the direction of travel. Moving clocks are observed to run slower. We've already proved both time dilation and length contraction. Time dilation came from the light clock thought experiment. Length contraction followed from the fact that in one frame, light is farther to travel than in another. If you haven't seen my last video on length contraction, I recommend watching it after this one to reinforce these ideas. This is the thumbnail. For now, let's treat these results as established facts and ask a deeper question. How can different observers look at the same events and see them in completely different ways? Now here's where the real puzzle begins. Because any observer is free to consider themselves at rest, each one sees the same rules play out. Time runs slower for anything in motion and length contracts along the direction of motion. From LeBron's perspective, he and his spaceship are at rest and it's the planet, Einstein, Newton, and the tree that are rushing past to the left. Their separation looks squeezed to half its length and their clocks appear to tick more slowly. But from Einstein and Newton's point of view, the roles are reversed. They're at rest, and it's LeBron and his spaceship moving to the right. LeBron's spaceship looks shortened, and his clocks run slow. Each side insists, you're the one that's contracted, you're the one in slow motion. How can both be correct? That's the puzzle, and the resolution lies in one of the deepest insights in special relativity, the relativity of simultaneity. The key is that in relativity, everything depends on your frame of reference. Each observer measures space and time from their own point of view. What seems simultaneous in one frame may not be simultaneous in another. And that's exactly what resolves the paradox. This is the first of three applets I've made to explain these ideas. Let's take a closer look at what relativity says about simultaneity. This applet shows LeBron on a train in relative motion with Einstein and Newton who are on the ground. In LeBron's frame, he is at rest. Einstein, Newton, and the ground move past him. LeBron stands at the center of his train and sends flashes of light to the front and back. Since the flashes travel equal distances at the same speed, they strike both ends at the same time. At the back and front of LeBron's ship are stopwatches. You can think of them as Apple watches. When the light reaches them, both start counting from zero. From LeBron's perspective, the watches are synchronized. They start together, tick at the same rate, and always stay in step. For him, the events are simultaneous. Now let's switch to the ground frame, where Einstein and Newton are at rest. Light still travels at the same speed, that never changes. But the picture looks different. The back of the train is moving towards the flash, while the front is moving away. When the light reaches the back of the train, the clock at back starts counting time from zero. The rear stopwatch is struck first. By the time the light reaches the front, about 0.87 seconds have already ticked on the rear clock. From their perspective, the clocks don't start together. The front lags behind. Light didn't strike the front stopwatch until the rear stopwatch already read 0.87 seconds in the frame of Einstein and Newton. As you can see, the clocks are not synchronized. The rear clock is always 0.87 seconds ahead of the front. So what changed? Only the frame of reference. Relativity says there's no universal rest frame. Each observer uses their own synchronized clocks, and that makes simultaneity frame dependent. LeBron insists both events happen together. Einstein insists they do not, 
and both are correct in their own frame. If the train reversed direction, the story would flip. The front clock would be struck first, then the back. And if you've ever heard of the twin paradox, this is the key. When LeBron turns around, he switches to a new frame of reference and the synchronization flips. What was the rear clock being ahead now becomes the front clock being ahead. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. In this applet, we'll show how Einstein and Newton, watching from the ground, measure the length of LeBron's spaceship and find it to be length contracted. In the next applet, we'll compare this with what LeBron sees when Einstein and Newton make that same measurement. The applets make the logic visual and easy to follow. In this applet, we're looking from the inertial reference frame of Einstein and Newton standing on the ground. From their perspective, LeBron's spaceship is racing to the right at a high speed. Because of relativity, the ship appears shorter than its proper length. The question is, how do Einstein and Newton actually measure the contracted length? Einstein and Newton stand at a fixed distance apart, the very distance they expect the moving ship to contract to. To synchronize their clocks, they send a light pulse from the midpoint between them. In their frame, the light travels equal distances at the same speed, striking Einstein left and Newton right at the same instant. When the pulses arrive, both start their stopwatches. The clocks are now synchronized. So now, both Einstein and Newton's stopwatch read zero and start counting time from this point forward. LeBron keeps moving forward, and at about 0.5 seconds in Einstein and Newton's frame, the front of his ship reaches Einstein. Both Einstein and Newton agree on all times because their clocks are synchronized. Now the measurement begins. As the ship keeps moving forward, eventually, the back lines up with Einstein and the front lines up with Newton. At that exact moment, each scientist marks the ground with an X. Einstein and Newton see this happen at 2.2 seconds on their synchronized watches. Finally, they measure the distance between the two Xs. The result is 1.5 times 10 to the 8th meters. LeBron continues flying onward, but the measurement is complete. From Einstein and Newton's perspective, his ship is shorter than its proper length. On the next slide, we'll flip perspectives and see how the same process looks to LeBron. Now we're in LeBron's frame of reference. His spaceship is at rest, showing its full proper length. The ground, Einstein, Newton, and the tree slide to the left at a high rate of speed. Because they're moving, in LeBron's frame, the distance between Einstein and Newton looks contracted. LeBron sees their spacing is one quarter of the ship's length. The question is, what does LeBron see when Einstein and Newton try to measure his ship? The first event is that a flash of light is emitted from the ground's midpoint. LeBron sees the flash hit Newton first because Newton is moving toward it. At that instant, Newton starts his stopwatch at time zero and it starts counting from there. LeBron will also start his own clock when the light strikes Newton. The light struck Newton, and this is Newton's clock, and this is LeBron's clock, and they both start at the same time. The next event is that the flash reaches Einstein. Since he is moving away from the light, it takes longer to reach him. In LeBron's frame, Einstein doesn't start his stopwatch until about 2.0 seconds have passed on LeBron's clock. So by the time Einstein's clock begins, Newton's stopwatch has already been running. There's another important detail. In LeBron's frame, Einstein and Newton are the ones moving, and moving clocks run slowly. This means Newton's stopwatch doesn't advance as quickly as LeBron's. For example, during the 2.6 seconds that tick on LeBron's clock between Newton's start and Einstein's start, Newton's stopwatch only shows 1.3 seconds. When Einstein finally starts his clock, LeBron sees Newton's stopwatch already shows 1.3 seconds. There's a 1.3 second time difference between these two events. I should also point out the slowing of time applies to everything Einstein and Newton do. And from LeBron's perspectives, the two clocks are never fully synchronized. Newton's clock is always ahead of Einstein's. Eventually, Einstein reaches the front of LeBron's ship. A little bit later, Newton reaches the front of LeBron's spaceship. When he does, he marks an X on the ground beneath him. His stopwatch reads about 2.7 seconds. Later, Einstein reaches the back of the ship. His stopwatch reads the same time, 
2.7 seconds, and he marks an X on the ground. Here's the key. On the bronze clock, these two events are not simultaneous. Newton's mark happened much earlier. Einstein's mark happened later. So even though both stopwatches say 2.7 seconds, those marks occur at different times in LeBron's frame. So in LeBron's frame, Einstein and Newton's clocks are out of sync, and the marks they make on the ground are separated in time. LeBron sees their measurement gives the contracted length, about three quarters of LeBron's ship's proper length. This is the heart of special relativity. Each frame builds its own consistent picture of space and time. To Einstein and Newton, LeBron's ship is contracted. To LeBron, Einstein and Newton are contracted and their clocks are desynchronized. And both descriptions are absolutely correct within their own frames. The key lesson is that reality itself depends on your frame of reference. Length contraction, time dilation, and the relativity of simultaneity are not tricks or illusions. They are real, measurable effects that arise from motion. And the thread that ties them all together, the reason different observers measure different distances, times, and events, is simultaneity. That's the deepest insight I want you to take away from this video. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H acephysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis.